Hello everybody, how are you doing today? It's Superfiend here. Welcome back to our Warhammer 2 Lizardman campaign as Nakai the Wanderer, part of the new Hunter and the Beast DLC. Hope you're enjoying the content so far. Uh, today, if we're lucky, we're going to be able to come down here and wipe out Techless. And I think I had talked about possibly going to war against the Tomb Kings. Now, the reason why we would do that is because we have a bunch of Croxigors and the Tomb Kings are a bunch of puny skeletons for the most part. I'm sure they got some Ushabti and maybe a couple big units by now, but our Croxigors should smash uh, pretty, pretty readily all that the Tomb Kings can throw our way. And so the way we're gonna be doing this, uh, this episode is with Nikai here, we're gonna go ahead and Let's see. Start moving down towards Teclas. Now, well, I assume Teclas is in here. It's the Mud Isles. It's the Order of the Lore Masters. It's his faction. I would assume he's like somewhere down there. Uh, what we're going to do is, uh, you know, we can assume this Astromancy stance. And I think we're going to do that. And so we're going to move all the way up to here. We're going to get into the Astromancy stance. Then what does this do for us? It lowers our campaign movement range by a little bit, uh, but it gives us Vanguard deployment for certain units. I don't know if the Croxigors are affected. We have a high chance of intercepting an army using the Underway Beast Paths or World Roots. We get an ambush defense chance of plus 50%, so really good for fighting Skaven. But what I really like is the campaign line of sight of 150%. And the reason I want that is because um, I want to be able to see well ahead of Nakai so that we don't, um, you, you know, so that we can make good moves. Uh, and then the other reason is over here, uh, we are going to pick up sequence of traversal. I've talked about this a little bit in the campaign so far. This is going to give us an additional 15% campaign movement range. And then we've already picked up Route Marcher for uh, Nakai, where is this over here? Route Marcher, and then we have another 10% movement range from our Horde Town Center building, or Town Hall building, which is now at rank five. So really, we have 35% minus 25% from our stance. So we still have 10% campaign movement range, which is not like that bad. And, but we're gonna be able to see much further ahead of us. And I kind of like that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do really quick before we get into the meat and potatoes of the episode here, I was taking a look at this stuff a little bit further, and I noticed that, okay, so as you hover over these things, okay, so as we hover around here, I guess this is like as it goes all the way. So there's like little notches here. Every time we build a temple for one of these three old ones, Itzel, Sol, Solanka, or Quetzal, uh, it fills up one of these notches. And then so right here, once you get to one, two, three, four, five, we have Etzel's Grace, which gives us the weapon strength for our Croxigors. We get to this one now, and we have uh, recruitment cost reduction for Croxigors um, and Sacred Croxigors. Uh, at the next one, five more temples later, we'll get the Beasts of Etzel. And that is a 120 uh, second cooldown, three uses per battle. Uh, but we get to summon a Razor Dawn hunting pack. So that's pretty cool. And then at the next one, we can summon... Uh, where is it here? No, recruit rank is increased. Okay, so we still have the um, uh, the Razor Dawn. And then when we get all the way up to the end here, we get the recruitment cost, the rank, the weapon strength. Uh, is there any difference between these two? I'm not seeing a difference between this one and this one here, right? And then the other thing we can do is we can spend our old one's favor as we get around these things. So like right now, if I were to spend 200 of the old one's favor, that would unlock the Blessed Saurus Warriors with shields for recruitment. Now, I still don't know if we can only have one unit of these or multiple units. Uh, but I assume, like, for these ones that unlock unit types, that becomes permanent. These other ones over here, though, that have the timer, I assume that those are a cooldown. So, like, if we were to spend 150 for Jurisdiction of the Beasts, we would have visibility over all of our vassal territories, but only for five turns. Or we would have, um, uh, if we did this one, spending 100, we would have open recruitment for Skink Chiefs with increased hero capacity and recruit rank, but only for three turns. So it's like you would use the old one's favor, 
get a couple skink chiefs really quick and then it would go away and then um similarly with these other ones down over here okay having said all that let's uh let's go ahead and end our turn and we'll see what happens here i'm okay so there's high queen kalita i have no idea what she's doing i imagine i imagine she's gonna go attack the uh the dark elves up here the blood hall coven no she's going south she's going south Okay, and then the Hunts Marshall's expedition that was raiding at the Monument of Isatel has apparently left. I don't know where they're going to go. I'm still surprised that the AI is not attacking our vassal territories. I, I would be expecting them to attack, attack our vassal more often, but they don't seem to be too interested. And so now we got pretty good line of sight here. Okay, and we can see Teclas there. Uh, he's not recruiting. I want to make sure that we get there on our next turn, though. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to force march to get closer. I feel pretty safe doing this. Um, can we get all the way across there? Yeah, we did. Look at that. And we have research available. Now, I think what I want to do next is I want to go down the top line here. And that opens up army recruitment capacity and army capacity. Uh, but what I'm really interested in is all the diplomatic bonuses to lizard men. I mean, the human and the high elf bonuses are good too, but I really want to get friendly with our lizard men neighboring factions and maybe get some confederation or, you know, military alliances and stuff like that. So we're going to go ahead and do sequence of command. Uh, I don't really think we need the horde growth or the um horde building cost construction right now i really want to focus on uh being good neighbors with our lizard men like if we go over here and look at itza which is the new lord gore rock uh, we can get a non-aggression pack we're at 39 relations it's deteriorating slightly but like i'd like to do confederating or military lines or stuff like that and i'm really not sure how confederating works uh with gore rock would he become would he become vassal and then we just take control of his armies or do we then obtain lizard men buildings and settlements i really i have no idea how they uh, mushed that together because we're a horde faction uh, but apparently we can join confederations so I, i'd be really curious to see if we could get a lizard men confederation at some point and just see exactly what happens Maybe, maybe Gore Rock becomes a horde army and all of their territory becomes vassal territory. It, it's like, I, I have no idea how they implemented it. I'm completely in the dark. I haven't watched anybody else's coverage of that particular aspect, so. All right, looks like we're gonna get to fight our friendly neighborhood Teclas. He's not running. It's uh, even odds, but I think we're going to absolutely crush them in battle here. Uh, they have a few regular spearmen units. He's got some pretty good looking sword masters here. Looks like they got their gold chevrons already. Uh, the frost heart phoenix will be a problem, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll wipe the floor with these guys. And what we're going to do to ensure that we wipe the floor with them. Can Kraxagoras be hidden? <laughs> that seems kind of silly. That really does seem kind of silly. Okay, I think I want to put these guys like right here like this. And then I'm going to put our shielded units over here. What is this? Another unit with shields? I think these guys don't have shields. Yeah. yeah I kind of like this. And we're not going to gamble. 20 wins of magic is enough to get the job done. We're going to put this guy right here and kind of entice them to come forward. Yeah, come get it. Come and get it. <laughs> you guys are so screwed. Okay, let's make sure we can shoot them with our poison. 
Oh, you're just gonna shoot me? <sighs> okay, let's shoot him with our poison and go get him with Nakai. Yeah, I hope we, we do some good damage, but I imagine that they're going to win the missile exchange here. I don't mind if our skink cohort with javelins takes a little bit of damage. Okay, here he comes. He's going to start winding up. There it goes. Whoosh, 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 and they run away. Okay, let's come back. Come on. That got them to shuffle around a little bit. They brought their Frost Heart Phoenix out. It looks like they're somewhat committing to the battle now. I'm gonna pull these guys back. Guard mode off of everybody. Come on, come get me. Okay, this is good. I think we'll win this exchange over here. Let's come over this way. I want to shoot this thing with poison and keep it from going anywhere. They can shoot Nakai all they want. Okay, here we go. Surprising that we're losing some morale here. The Frostheart Phoenix is tying up two units of Crocs. All right, come on, bring it in over here. Uh, they look like they are really favoring coming over this way, so. Uh, we're going to pull back with these guys. Push up with these guys. I ah, keep shooting the Kai. Go ahead. I don't know what the cast time on this is. Let's try to get it right in there. Three seconds. Looking good. Looking good. Looking good. Come on. Not very good. Okay, so they're uh, falling into our infantry here. Let's bring our Croxigores out to the side. Okay, let's charge in this way with Nakai. This is uh, 50 seconds of debuff over this way. Okay, we're looking good, I think. Almost killed the Frostheart Phoenix. Those guys should get crushed right there. Okay, charging into the flank. Yeah, here we go. Get in here. Nakai's taking a fair amount of damage. He's in here all by himself, though, fighting the Swordmasters. We'll go ahead. We'll buff him. Frostheart Phoenix is trying to run. Have we shattered all this stuff yet? Not quite. No, we broke the Spearmen. Let's go get on their archers with two units of Crocs. Their sword masters are going to rip apart our skink priest if we're not careful. And the Kai having a rough time here. Let's bring all this stuff down to attack these spearmen. Let's get away from the sword masters, please. Go ahead and pop Nakai's ability. Give that to the sword masters. Oh, our skinks with the javelins just took a beating over here. Let's go charge over this way. Okay, come on, guys. Let's get the uh, Lothern Sea Guard. Oh, come on. Okay, Silver Helms. Uh, let's put the tougher unit or stronger unit on the Silver Helm, the other unit on the Frostheart Phoenix. Our javelins are back. Okay, 
coming out this fight. Let's go get those guys over there. How are we doing in here? We need to start ripping apart the sword masters if we can. Kai's a little bit uh, beaten up. Low winds of magic. We don't have a lot of winds of magic for this fight. Can we get out with you, please? Okay, let's get over here. I do think we're going to win, but man, we are taking some heavy casualties here. Please kill the sword masters. Okay, let's bring these guys over this way. Go get the archers. Okay, all this stuff on the sword masters, please. Could really use some more winds of magic here. Okay, we're on those archers. How are we doing over here? Uh, please get the Frost Heart Phoenix. Dead, dead, dead. Sword Masters. This is nine wins of magic to debuff all this stuff in here. Okay, okay, get on these guys. Keep getting them over there, please. Attack over here. Let's bring our Scar Veteran to help with the Lothern Sea Guard. Okay, some of the stuff in here is broken. Okay, let's get on the Spearmen. They've got a flock of beasts on us, I think is what that one is. Frostheart Phoenix, very strong. Okay, we finally got these guys. Get back on them. Get on Teclas, please. Okay, our weakest unit of Crocs in there is probably this one with 10. So let's bring him this way. Okay, we finally got some Winds of Magic here. So let's go ahead and debuff, and then with Nakai, buff everything. And let's just pummel our way through the Lothern Sea Guard with that. Good grief. Let's come back over here and attack Jornador. Jornador. Skink Priest, come out, please. Lothern Sea Guard. Okay, let's get on the co um, Teclas. <laughs> and we'll send, uh, we'll send this guy over here, please. How we doing? How we doing? Uh, Sword Masters are back. Let's focus on the Spearmen. Okay, we need to come over here and get on the Archers with that unit of Crocs. Uh, let's turn our attention to the Silver Helms over there. Or you know what? Let's just go get the Lothern Sea Guard here. We'll charge into the Archers right here. That's right. The battle is lost. Come on. Get in here. Oh, wow. We lost a whole unit of Crocs. We'll have to recruit them. Uh, they're shattered over there. Lothern Sea Guard is shattered. Teclas is uh, shattered or dead. Battle's won, but man, what a cost. What a cost. Maybe I could have fought that a little bit better. Pyrrhic victory. Uh, but it's okay. Oh man, these guys were rank six. That kind of that kind of stings a little bit. Uh, if you want to pause this and take a look, feel free. Otherwise, I'll see you on the campaign map. Uh, quite a big boost to our treasury, almost 3,000. A rank for Nakai. Gets him up to rank 9, very good. And we're going to go ahead and continue uh, with our gifts for Itzel. That's going to give us 485 additional income for sacking or plundering the settlement. And I think that's the end of Teclas. Defeated Teclas wins the magic power reserve, plus 10 for Nakai's army. I've also gotten an Ogre Blade and Faction Destroyed. Oh, we can go ahead and give the Ogre Blade to our Saurus Scar Veteran with our skill point. Oh, with our skill point, I think we'll go ahead and get Melee Attack. I don't know if the Mysterious Island is going to initiate a battle for us so we're not going to pick that up just yet uh, I think what we'll do is how much upkeep are we paying for these 234 we can go ahead here and recruit another unit of crocs 
And I think we'll go ahead and upgrade our Sky Plaza as well, which will give us an additional 5% upkeep reduction and 2% further casualty replenishment rate. And so let's go ahead and get another unit of Crocs here. And then I think we'll end our turn. Now, before the Tomb Kings, High Queen Kalita gets too strong, I'd like to declare war on them. Uh, we would be able to get eventually Sentinels of Zeti so that our vassal has the whole province over here. And uh, they don't have a whole lot of territory. They got four, somewhere between probably four and six settlements, if I had to guess. And if we could get our vassal, the Defenders of the Great Plan, uh, rooted in over here, that would kind of give us a pretty, I think, stable source of income. Uh, I am still a little bit sketchy of our vassal territory up here. It, it just, it feels like it's unstable income. You know, like the AI factions are just going to grow in strength and then come out and take all of it, although they haven't really done so yet. Uh, we have unseasonable weather, giving us minus 20% casualty replenishment rate. Ouch. Uh, but a big, 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 big boost to recruitment cost, which we really can't take advantage of because we don't have the income per turn to support a lot of armies right now. Uh, so in terms of going to war with High Queen Kalita, we don't know where her armies are. We don't know where her strength is. So I think the smart way to do it is maybe to come all the way down to like down here and kind of scout her out and we could pick up some sea treasure on the way and maybe boost our battle prowess uh for example do we have anything right now no we don't have anything right now okay let's pick this up i hope it makes us better in battle yes better in battle we have regeneration for our army and then charge bonus seven percent for the assigned unit let's make sure that Nakai is, has that equipped. Uh, I don't think we're going to be fighting any men for a little while, so we'll go ahead and do that. I don't know that we need the leadership, so let's go for more charge bonus. I also kind of feel like we're not going to be fighting Skaven, but I don't have anything else to put in here that would make make good sense. Ah, darn, but we stopped replenishing in the water here. Uh, if we force march, can we get back onto the territory? Okay. What? Why are these guys not replenishing? Oh, dear. Now, I could have sworn that I was replenishing in prior episodes while in an encampment stance. Uh, but now they only replenish while they're encamped? It's kind of odd. Uh, let's end our turn. I thought I was going to replenish by coming back into allied territory here. Darn. Darn, darn, darn. Uh, but in any case, the reason I came back up is I think we're going to go over and pick up the Skull Reef for some income. I think we could use that. We'll also get a battle out of it, which will allow us to get to rank 10 with Nakai. He's got um, really promising abilities for us at ranks 10 and 11. We got five turns of improved Winds of Magic, Power Reserve, and Winds of Magic starting them out. So that's kind of helpful. Uh, let's go ahead and just move as far as we can. And we'll encamp to get our replenishment. Gosh, it seems like it seems like it's really low too. Like it, it feels like there should be double pluses because we're in allied territory. I wonder, I wonder if something has changed with Nikai's. Uh, replenishment. Okay, but we got a skill point here with our caster, and I want to pick up the Comet of Cassandora. And then in a turn or two, we'll go pick this up. Now, I don't know. Maybe we'll come up here after all and check out the Blood Hall Cove, and I imagine that they got a ton of territory. I really want to go to war with the Tomb Kings, though. Uh, but we need to spend a little bit of time replenishing is kind of the problem right now. So I don't know. Maybe maybe the way we go to war with High Queen Kalita is to just come take the Sentinels of Seti and then the smaller province over here and then maybe lie in wait for the Tomb Kings to come and take it back and then we counterattack. Something like that. Be a little bit sneaky. 
I don't feel any uh, super great urgency um, to acquire lots of territory, but I'd still kind of like to get our vassal really strong because they do give us money and we are very low. So here, relations with a nearby settlement have deteriorated. Their interpretation of the great plan may be at odds with the old one's intentions. Your slan mage priests inform you of a new ritual to recharge the geomantic web. But the price is a sacrifice. Will you raid for captives and sacrifice them or leave your neighbors be as time may yet prove your vision correct? Uh, sacrificing them will give us more winds of magic. Uh, we'll probably end up at war with the Blood Hall of Coven, so we may as well just sacrifice them. And what does our army look like? Ugh, I, want, I want more units or more replenishment. Okay, we're going to come up. We're going to replenish one more time. And we'll get our first diplomatic bonus to humans, high elves, and lizardmen from our technology tree. So not a whole lot going on right now. Hopefully we'll get to some action soon. Oh, there's another little uh, treasure that popped in over here. That's cool. So we could pick up. Uh, maybe we want to pick up this one first and then this one. Because this one, if it makes us better in battle as well then we'll have two bonuses in battle when we fight whatever's awaiting for us here at the skull reef i know the skull reef is a battle i just don't know if this is going to be a battle okay sequence of command army capacity plus one diplomatic relationship improvement we're going to go for a sequence of strategy which further increases our army capacity and global recruitment capacity again we don't have the income to support multiple armies right now, so we don't get the full bonus from that, but we will uh, eventually. What I want right now is the public order, or not public order, the diplomacy boosts. Um, what's the fastest way to get to this thing? All right, so into the water we go. Hopefully there's no storm here that causes attrition. I think it's going to take too long to come over and pick this up. So we're going to go ahead and get the, the Skull Reef now while we have the replenishment. And then maybe we'll come inland to pick this one up. And then maybe go for the Sentinel of Zeti. Okay, Blue Vipers. They're back. They're at it again. <laughs> so we're going to lose some territory up there, I think. A brutal business. This could this could not have come at a better time. Weapon damage plus 20 for all armies of all factions. That's going to be really handy for our Croxigor units. Let's look at their weapon damage now. 125. 162 for our sacred Crocs. Can we recruit while we're in a boat? We can't. All right, here we go. We're going to have a battle here. Raid the Cove. I hope it's not a gigantic army. Damn. Gosh, it's all pull arms. Oh, boy. Oh, and I forgot to assign our standards. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Well, I think our goal is going to be to charge into the pull arms with, like, all of our crocs. Uh, get the debuffs put down and pop Nakai's um, melee attack buff and just chew through these guys as rapidly as we can. We also have a comment of Cassandora if we can get a really nice clump of AI troops. So let's see here. Nakai, you're going to lead the way, dude. Uh, we're aquatic. Melee defense and melee attack. They're also aquatic. <laughs> so um, I don't know if the depth guard are aquatic. And I can't tell. I don't get the unit card on legendary. Okay. Um, okay, we're gonna charge down this uh, this flank here. And we're just gonna make like a long conga line of Croxigors. Shielded units, unshielded unit, uh, skink. Uh, we're going to want our Skink Priest over here and our our Scar Veteran maybe supporting our infantry. Guard mode off. All right, off we go. We're just going to charge down there. Oh, boy, the hand cannons. Don't like the hand cannons. 
Now, how many wins of magic does the comet cost? This is the Thunderbolt. The really bright one is the Thunderbolt, and the comet is 13. It's a seven second bombardment. Causes massive magical damage, large strike area. Strong versus multiple units. They have um, they have multiple units. Uh, I don't know that they have any war machines. Yeah, they do. They got some mortars. So maybe what we want to do is kind of come over here where they can see us, but the trees will protect us from the mortars a little bit. All right, and the guy's going to charge right into these guys. Everything's going to charge right into this stuff. Okay. We got to wipe out these pole arms as fast as we can. Okay, their hand cannons are blasting us over here. Okay, so charge into the gunnery mob and then just push through to the hand cannons, please. Push over to the hand cannons. They're holding a bunch of units in reserve, so um, I think we're going to be okay overall in the battle. Haven't used any of our magic yet. Uh, let's pull back a little bit. That's distracting their artillery fire. Let's just make sure that we're on the hand cannons. They're bringing over the meat shield units. They're zombie mobs. Those things are worthless. Okay, here we go. Nakai cleared everything. He took a bit of damage. He was full health. Now he's down to like 60%. Okay, we got to get in here. Uh, let's cup, bring a couple units to the hand cannons. Okay, here come their pull arms, but it's a bunch of zombie mobs. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull back with all this stuff. Okay. We're faster than them. We can kite them. Come on, let's wipe out these hand cannons. Let's get this unit, Sacred Croxigors, out of there, please. Please, please, please. And then now with the three back units. Now let's see here. Stay on these. With Nakai. Uh, oh, these are all zombie pirates. Okay. Or deckhead mobs. It's not depth guard is what I'm saying. Okay. Charging back in. Charging back in. Okay, I think I'd rather have their artillery fire over here than at our infantry. I don't think it'll do a whole lot of damage to our crocs. This stuff is all crumbling. Get in here on this stuff. Where's our sacred crocs? Let's pull them out and get them on the hand cannons. The hand cannons are trying to, like, pull back. Okay, sacred crocs. Stay on the hand cannons. Okay, but otherwise we are destroying this stuff in here. Stay on the hand cannons, which are crumbling. They're trying to peel some of their units off to uh, follow us. I think their mortars are doing more damage to them than they are to us. Stay on the hand cannons. All right, let's 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 push up this way a little bit. Okay, here comes their lord, Rosalind the Drowner. All right, let's go get her with Nakai. And let's ignore all this stuff here. Let's just charge through. And charge through. Okay, now here we got their death guard. Okay, we want to get on the Kai right now. We'll go ahead and boost him. Let's get on their lord. Let's just kind of direct everything at their lord. 
Let's get our skink priest out of here. Scarus vet. And the rest of this stuff just kind of push up to here, I think. And then with Nakai, we can pop our ability. Okay, now we got Death Guard and all this stuff over here. Let's give them the comment of Cassandora. Oh, please don't move. Just stay right where you guys are. Please just stay right there and eat that. Uh, Nakai's enraged. Oh, that was pretty good. Okay, we want to kill the Lord. Kill the Lord. Uh, what's going on here? Oh, he's getting swarmed. Let's take our unshielded Saurus to this side. Our shielded Saurus to this side. Our Scar Veteran to this side. Oh, crap. They have a Rotting Leviathan. I did not know that. That's going to be a problem. That's going to be a real problem. We must get Nakai and these guys out of here. I didn't realize that they had a Rotting Leviathan. Is this guy anti-large? He is. Let's get him over here to the Leviathan. Let's uh, shoot the Leviathan. Okay, get back on these pole arms. Ooh, boy. The Leviathan's going to be the problem. It is losing leadership. These guys are doing okay over here. They're not taking a whole bunch of damage. Kai's looking a little bit hurt. And our sacred crocs are looking a little hurt too. Come on. Get on the Lord, please. Kill the Lord. Okay, Nakai, go get the Lord. Sacred crocs, come back. Must kill the Lord. Must kill the Lord. Sorrow Scar Veteran. Okay, get on those units that are coming in behind. Get on those units. Okay, these guys, these guys, these guys, these guys, this guy. Get on the Leviathan. The Kai's almost got the Lord dead. Okay, shoot the Leviathan. There goes the Lord. Okay, so now they're going to really start to crumble. I am pretty sure we're going to win. Okay, get this stuff. Get the Leviathan, please. But not our Skink Priest. Big debuff. Big buff with Nakai. For a melee attack. Ancient. Our sacred Croxagoras. Let's go get on the hand cannons over here before they kill something valuable. Come on. Rotting Leviathan's going down. We're doing good. We've got this. Excellent. Woo. Rough battle. Rough battle. We kind of got lucky that they decided to hold a bunch of their pole arms in reserve. And I don't think they got as good a use out of their rotting leviathan as they maybe could have. Uh, lots of kills from our sacred crocs. 205. Nikai's up to 111. 111 on this unit here. And the other one's all hovering between 50 and... 80 plus or minus so 2400 from the battle rank 10 for Nakai uh, you know it's very interesting in Marcus's campaign when you pick the the release captives or whatever it's called for him where you get the treasury bonus he only gets one turn of negative casualty replenishment Nakai I feel gets punished really hard with five turns of reduced casualty replenishment so anyways we're gonna pick kill and eat seven percent replenishment oh my goodness 20,000 wow wow usually only the vampire coast gets such a big uh, pot from that and a terrifying mask of E. Uh, who would we put that on? Uh, I think we'll give him the terrifying mask. He's got a skill point. Blade Master increasing his melee attack to seven. Nakai is up to rank 10. We're going to get Legendary Warrior. This increases his leadership aura size by 20%. 
characters or a leadership effect is now up to plus five for or, or did i say rank 11 rank 10 at rank 11 i think we'll go for first spawning which gives frenzy to our croxigore and sacred croxigore units that'll make us really strong in combat um i feel like we should replenish but i do want to be greedy and pick up the shipwreck so this is a tough choice tough choice because uh, I don't know if we have a battle. Well, if it is a battle, we could always pick the lesser option and just get like a small bonus. Um, so let's come through here. We'll do it. Keep going. Keep going. We can't replenish anyway, so uh, we'll just force March full speed ahead. We're not at war with anyone that can come out and attack us. And we'll go ahead. We'll end our turn. Uh, I want to check our rights really quick. We could spend 3,000 and get lots of weapon strength and armor. For our Croxigors, maybe we'll save that for fighting the Tomb Kings. Uh, the Rite of Allegiance is tempting, but I don't want to spend 300 of the Old One's favor for that. And the reason why it's tempting is because then the Greenskins up here would take some attrition. But I also have a feeling they're going to charge in with the second army anyways and just wipe out the settlement. So, uh, can we tell you guys to like attack? No, you guys don't have an army. Uh, where, where for them do we get the, this one, a non-replenishing army of blessed units will spawn for the defenders of the great plan at their capital. So, uh, if their capital gets threatened, which maybe it will be next, maybe we'll need to do that, but I don't want to spend 500 old ones favor for that. Um, maybe we're going to have to put our plans to attack the tomb Kings on hold and maybe go up and get these two territories back from the blue vipers we don't want them to get too strong uh, in any case let's end our turn clan fester has been destroyed most likely by by itza gorak action destroy it let's go check our hmm they haven't done it yet i don't think we'll get there in four turns either to reinforce it but i'm surprised that they have an attack so maybe they're not going to bring a second army up uh in any case we're going to end this one here because i have a child's birthday party to go to lots of fun yay I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know with comments or thumbs up. If you did, check out the rest of the channel. If you've not already, consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. You have a good afternoon and take care.